The focus of this video is duodenal cancer. Duodenum is the continuation of the stomach and has a C-shaped configuration. We will learn about the types of duodenal cancer, the anatomy, risk factors and symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. Let us now look at this cartoon to understand the anatomy. Food enters through the gullet into the stomach that churns it over and then passes it towards the duodenum. So the duodenum anatomically starts at the culmination of the stomach. It is a hollow tube and it has a lining. It carries the food on its journey but the important component is this area where the pancreas gland which sits behind the stomach produces its enzymes that are carried through this tube, the pancreatic duct, which then meet with the food arriving in the duodenum while the liver produces bile which comes down the bile tube and the bile is important in digestion of the fat. And these two secretions come out at a point called the ampulla or the ampulla vata. And the digestion of the food begins in the duodenum as the food passes through. It is then continued with the rest of the small bowel. So the important points to remember are the proximity of the duodenum to the pancreas and to the ampulla as well as the bile duct. Anatomically, the duodenum is divided into four parts, although it's one continuous tube. The first part is called the duodenal cap. It is very close to the bile tube, which runs behind it, as well as the blood vessels towards the liver. And there is a descending part, which has the ampulla. This is followed by a horizontal or the third part of the duodenum, culminating in the fourth part, which is slightly higher, which then joins with the jejunum. Hence, we have the first, second, third, and the fourth parts of duodenum, anatomically speaking. The focus of this video is the adenocarcinoma, which is a primary duodenal cancer. Other tumors may also arise in the duodenum, but are not discussed here, such as the neuroendocrine tumor, the lymphoma, or the sarcoma, also called the GIST-type tumor. These tumors arise from the lining of the duodenum called the epithelial layer and typically they form nubbins on the surface of the duodenum called polyps. These polyps may increase in size and cause obstruction of the duodenum and stop the food from going through but equally they may up cause obstruction of the pancreas tube if they grow towards the pancreas or the bile tube causing jaundice. The risk factors of duodenal cancer include genetic such as the familial polyposis syndrome, the Lynch syndrome, cystic fibrosis, or health conditions such as celiac disease and Crohn's disease. People in the ages of 60 to 80 have a higher risk, with males having slightly higher chance of getting it. It is also more common in the black population and people who smoke or drink excessive alcohol, high salt or excessive red meat have a higher risk of duodenal cancer. The symptoms of duodenal cancer include pain, typically in the pit of the stomach. As the duodenal cancer increases in size, it starts causing obstruction to the passage of the food, leading to nausea and vomiting. Typically, the vomiting occurs after several days and immediately the patients feel a whole lot better and find that they can eat again until the obstruction causes the stomach to fill up again and another cycle of vomiting starts. Patients typically lose weight, become weak and lethargic. It is also very possible for more advanced cancers to start losing blood from its surface, leading to anemia, or sometimes it is more obvious that there is blood in the stool, such as dark stool. Finally, the duodenal cancer may progress to a complete obstruction of the duodenum so that the patient now cannot retain anything that they eat and end up vomiting. Equally, the progression may extend towards the pancreas causing the bile tube to be strictured and the patients may become jaundiced. In order to diagnose duodenal cancer, the clinicians have to have a very high index of suspicion once patients present with symptoms suggestive of duodenal cancer and it's important to catch it at the early stage wherever possible. Typically, the first investigation performed is an endoscopy. This involves insertion of a flexible tube down into the stomach, examining the stomach and its content as well as going into the duodenum. However, it's important to understand that most endoscopes do not go beyond the second part of the duodenum. So frequently cancers arising in the third or the fourth part of duodenum or beyond are not seen with 
routine endoscopy, but require a longer endoscope called enteroscopy. View seen from an endoscope inside the lumen of the DDNM and you can see the cancer arising from the side wall of the DDNM outlined over here. Typically CT scans or MRI scans are performed. These are great at not only diagnosing duodenal cancer when it arises, but also the extent of its spread within the duodenum and beyond. In this CT scan, which is a cross-sectional view, you can see the lumen of the duodenum over here, but there is a large duodenal cancer engulfing the whole of the duodenum as seen in this area over here. CT PET scan is sometimes performed to assess whether or not the duodenal cancer has spread beyond the confine of the duodenum to other parts of the body, which is a clever scan. One last thing to mention about endoscopy is that you can take biopsies to confirm the duodenal cancer and its type. The treatment of the duodenal cancer depends on the stage of the disease. So in the precancerous stage where there is only a polyp in the lining, using the flexible tube, the endoscope, it can be inserted and pluck out the polyp by using diathermy or heat and remove it that way. However, for frank cancer related to the duodenum, the best treatment and the curative option is the prerequisites for surgery are that the cancer is limited to the duodenum or nearby, nearby spread to the pancreas or its surroundings that can be removed surgically and the patient is fit enough to undergo an operation. Hence for duodenal cancer in this part involving the ampulla or the pancreas itself, the procedure performed is called a Whipple operation, which is a very extensive operation that involves removal of the whole of the duodenum, head of the pancreas, part of the stomach, and the bile, bile tube outside of the liver, including the gallbladder, all in one specimen. It's important to realize that this is the duodenal cancer we're talking about and not pancreatic cancer, and this is a separate entity. The remnant pancreas, the stomach, and the bile tube are then rejoined to a loop of the bowel, thus completing the operation. It is also possible for duodenal cancer in other parts away from this area or from the pancreas to perform a segmental resection of the duodenum and not the whole Whipple operation. The choice of the procedure will be determined by the team looking after the patient, dependent upon the location and the and the extent of the spread of the disease. After removal of the cancer, and once the patient has recovered, supplemental chemotherapy may be considered what's called adjuvant chemotherapy. The prognosis or long-term survival of treated duodenal cancer with surgery is better than pancreatic cancer, with over 50% of the patients being cured. However, if the tumor cannot be removed, then the symptoms have to be palliated, typically the obstruction of the duodenum or obstruction of the bile tube. This may involve performing a bypass operation, which involves bringing up a loop of the bowel further downstream and connecting it to the stomach by performing a join so that the food can then bypass the obstruction and just enter the small bowel. If patients are not well enough to undergo a bypass, then sometimes a duodenal stent may be inserted, which is a mesh metal tube, goes through the obstruction and then springs it open and remains in place to allow the patient to eat. A similar metal stent can be inserted into the bile tube, either by using an endoscope or through the skin where a radiologist inserts a wire into the bile tube and then threads a metal stent on top to allow the bowel tube to open up. Palliative chemotherapy or radiotherapy for pain and bleeding may sometimes be utilized with control of symptoms. This completes a brief overview of duodenal cancer. If you have any comments, please do share.